Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Create. Today we're going to be going over how you can make an automatic farm, uh, mess around with some redstone remotes, as well as use belt logistics. Uh, it doesn't sound like very much, but it's actually really cool stuff to see. As you can see what was behind me, we currently have that automatic farm going on. Whoa. And we also have a little bit of those belt logistics I was talking about. This is just a small bit of it, but they're actually really cool. You can use it to make a really neat sorting system. So to start off with, you'll probably want to make yourself a mechanical press. Wait, what? We're kind of getting away from the, the logistics. No, no, we're not. The mechanical press is going to be required because if you want something like a belt observer, which I'll cover in a moment, you'll need gold sheets. In order to make that, you'll need one of these mechanical presses, which therefore requires gold sheets. So, or other kinds of sheets, because there's also iron ones. If I put down an ingot that can be flattened into a sheet, if this is above a belt that it is running on, it will flatten it into a sheet, provided it has some kind of rotational force. In this case, I'm using a motor, and you could also use, you know, obviously your usual setup for some kind of, uh, you know, water wheel or or your air power, etc. But in this case, that's going to work. And then you can make yourself these belt observers. When put next to a mechanical belt, you can then use them. As you see here, you just click on something. Let's uh, let's put iron sheets. We'll put that right here, and it will activate a redstone signal to nearby blocks if this is detected on the belt. Now in this case, I don't have that set up for that, so I'm not going to. But I do have other things set up. I've got these flex crates, which are also pretty darn cool. You see here we have wheat seeds in here. Anything, anytime wheat seeds come down this belt along this line, it will get pushed by a piston because the belt observer sees that, and it knocks it into this hopper. Now, you could have it pushed onto other belts. I would recommend against that because they sometimes get stuck. So it's best to have it go into an inventory of some sort, like a hopper and then go back onto a belt from there you could always use something like a, an extractor and so on now these flex crates when you make them recipe for that is of course gold sheets plus your regular stuff you get a couple of them and they they look like they don't hold very much uh they hold like half the size of a, a regular chest but they're adjustable so if you look here scroll to modify i can increase by a few numbers at a time or i can press shift and scroll and increase by stacks at a time. I can even reduce it down all the way to one, max it out at 1,024. Pretty darn cool. Uh, and this allows you to keep specific amounts for whatever recipes you have, etc. Uh, and it's just neat like that. Now, that aside, it's just an inventory, really. But it just looks much better. And you, d you can open it without hearing the, the creaking that you get from a normal vanilla Minecraft chest. Now... In here, I currently have another chest, and I'm, I'm kind of exploit, explaining several things at once to show you uh, a chain of items. Here, let's get rid of this gold sheet. We don't need that anymore. Over here, we have a linked extractor hooked up to a redstone link. This is going to allow me to remotely open this extractor so that all the goods in here come down this line and get buffeted, sorted along this path into each of the different hoppers and so on, etc., or into the trash, as it may be. So, if you look here, we currently have a redstone link. These here are made with gold sheets, redstone torch, etc., and of course, some other unit that can receive the same thing, like a linked extractor, can really be uh, useful as well. It's just an extractor with a redstone torch, and it can receive a signal from a matching frequency. Now, in this case, you have two frequency slots here. And usually you can put blocks or maybe a few tools in here to identify. That's all this is. It's just an identifier. So frequency one is sword nothing or iron sword nothing. And this is iron sword nothing. So therefore, you can see that they're both red. If I put something in this other slot, it will change this to broadcast a signal of sword and let's say hopper. You know, I could have it do something along those lines. And then this would no longer receive the signal from that one. It would receive a signal from any that matches that exactly. Now you can also filter this so that it only filters certain things out just like you would a normal extractor. And you can see that it's receiving things because it has like this little satellite dish looking thing on the outside. Otherwise, it doesn't have that. Now, something else you should know is that a redstone link can also be turned to itself. So in this case, 
Let's make this one, uh, let's grab some slime ball. This is slime ball, and this is slime ball. Actually, here, we'll do double slime ball in this case. <laughs> it shouldn't really make a difference. I'll grab a lever, and we'll put it next to this one. Turn it on, you can see red light, right? Now, something else you should probably recognize is that it's not transmitting a signal. Why is it not transmitting a signal? Well, because it's currently both sending. They're both sending signals. So you want to change this with an empty hand, sneak, right click, and it receives now, just as I was saying before with the little satellite dish. So therefore, I turn this off and on, and it should affect that, but I currently have something else going in another location. So actually, let me turn this into a different one. And then you can see now, on this signal, slime, uh, slime nothing, it will actually send and receive the signal. It's pretty cool. And it works at a good distance too. You might have to, you know, break and replace if you have some kind of malfunction or whatnot, but then it just works fine. And you should be able to use it for several things. Now, in this case, I currently have this set up on sword and I have this in a chest up here. And you notice the chest looks like it's set into something. It's set on a belt support, which the t you can actually stand on this. It's two blocks tall ish. It, it's like almost two blocks tall, but the second block height, if I actually try breaking here, there's nothing there to break. It's all in the bottom block for you to break things. And this is actually designed so that if you have some kind of belt system going on like this, you can actually break the block below it. And you can use this as a decorative means for covering up the belt a bit so that it doesn't look like people are going to lose their fingers in the side of a conveyor belt because, you know, uh, work safety. So let's continue on with this. If I activate this by flicking the lever, all the items should therefore store, start pouring out. And you'll notice that several of them, let's actually get something a little easier to see with here, start getting sorted into the appropriate bins by their respective pistons. And of course, this is actually not going to make it all the way down because it just got smashed and it goes into the trash bin. So therefore the iron ingots did not get sorted because they got smashed by the mechanical press. So sometimes you might want to have some redstone hookups or things turned off and whatnot. And you can see all the slime balls are just getting thrown away into the trash bin, which we can have emptied out here. And of course these can accept redstone signals as well. So if I have a redstone signal here, it's going to stop. You can see the red li line around there. Usually that kind of is a, a good symbol for what is about to happen. Now, just a brief aside, some other things you can do with a redstone link. This one here is currently set up with nothing. This one here is currently set up with nothing. So it's frequency blank blank is what it is. I have rotational force going into some gear shifts at the top here, which are hooked up to some other really cool stuff. And watch what happens here. I currently have a drawbridge, uh, like a gate rather. It's really cool. And you can adjust the speed on that, of course, by having your rotational force go faster or slower. But this is what I'm going to show you, but on a more horizontal manner, and it's going to be incorporating this farm. Before I get into that, though, just a really brief thing. Flex crates, obviously you already know about those. There are also stockpile switches. So if you have certain uh, measurements met, let's reduce this to one. On here, you can see that there is no redstone signal. If I put something in here, it is now 100% full. It does that. You can also change the percentage that it actually sends out redstone signals. By shift right click, you can change the percentages for the stop signal, start signal, and so on. Therefore, allowing you a lot of adjustability for uh, your inventory systems. Now, let's get into this grand design here, because I currently have this all hooked up with the bread making device that I did in my previous episode, which, if you don't remember, is quite a behemoth. Now, <laughs> this adds quite a bit to that on top of it. So, things you're going to need are quite numerous, and this is for automating it fully. But this is just one example. There are multiple methods that you personally could do this. A sticky mechanical piston. You're going to want several of these, depending upon how wide you want your farm to be. Any area that is going to be harvested will be needed to be harvested by these little saw blades here, which actually, let me grab one of those, a mechanical harvester. These do not hurt you, and sometimes you saw the rendering just kind of went off the, the edge there, it disappeared. That's just a little, you know, normal vanilla thing. But 
these mechanical harvesters will only harvest uh, the, uh, the, the ready to harvest items. If you look here, it says harvest all mature crops the blade is running into and resets them to their initial growth state. So therefore you can use it for that. This here, a redstone contact, is another item that's going to be needed, as well as translation chassis. But it can be used for multiple things, and you can stack these on top of each other. So, what do I have going here? The sticky pistons, sticky mechanical pistons specifically, if you notice, they also have these. Piston extension poles will be needed to be lined up across the surface that you want to harvest. So therefore, they're at the same level. I currently have some belt supports knowing that the top level is kind of transparent for other blocks. So therefore, when it's in its resting mode, the, uh, what is it, the mechanical harvester blades are kind of hidden in this thing. So if I remove one of them, there we go, you'll see when it retracts that the blades are actually uh, hidden right there. But you're going to want to put down a row of mechanical sticky pistons going to want to put a gear shift probably at the end of that so that you have a redstone pulse available to it. There you go. You can see it's right there. And I, I shouldn't have, have moved that. That was my mistake because, oh, I'll show you why that actually grabbed that block in a moment and why things just went wonky. Oof. That, that, this is some of the mistakes that are possible to happen and things that you're going to want to look out for. I'm going to show you as well because there's a lot of things that can go wrong with setting up this crazy maniacal uh, mischief uh, uh, machine. I don't know. But if you look here, it's got the numbers that were on there on the uh, the translation chans chassis. If those numbers are scrolled on with your mouse wheel, you might actually grab more than you need. Like this is at two. It should be at one. I would recommend turning all of these at one, have them all facing out, put sticky stuff on them. If you don't know what that means, put a slime ball on it. You just right click a slime ball on there and turn it sticky, except for the one that is going to have the uh, the piston extension poles in it. You don't need one on there. You can put one on there, but I, I'd recommend it as just against it so you don't, you know, it keeps it a little bit prettier. And you're going to need a long path for however long you want this thing to travel through your sticky mechanical piston with these piston extension poles. That's exactly what it's for. So what are we doing here? Let's grab one of these, put it down. Uh, let's put it this way. So if I put some extension poles on the back of your sticky mechanical piston and I put translation chassis on the back here, let me grab some rotational force in the form of a motor. There you go. That's simple, right? And then you need to reverse that to bring it back. Bump. And then if you put a har mechanical harvester on the front of that, now this, this is going to actually go wrong. So just stick with me for a second. There we go. Now it, it looks like it worked, right? Well, watch what happens when I retract it. It left the mechanical harvester. So you're going to want to make sure that you add your slime balls to the front of these things and that you change the, <laughs> the range on these things to be just one. You don't, you don't need to have that many on there. So this is your most basic format, right? And yes, you can set this to be just above sugarcane as well. So you can have it constantly uh, chopping those and harvesting that stuff if you so desire. Now, the thing is, in order to get it to retract, that's what this is for, the gear shift. So if I put a gear shift, uh, let's grab one. I don't, I don't think I have one in my inventory. Let's grab a gear shift, put that on here. This will allow you to uh, basically, where is the motor again? Grab one of those, put that on here. If I have a redstone signal, grab a lever, put this next to the gear shift, it then reverses it. So I can just, aha, now you see how that came to be. Same exact idea, just running a little bit faster. So this is the, the basic process of how it's going. So with this in mind, you can therefore have it go forward and backwards, right? You could set it on your own vanilla timer. You could set it on a different kind of timer. I am currently using just a bunch of redstone dust hooked up to a redstone contact, which redstone contacts. And I'm not, I'm not showing you a lot of the recipes on these things because they're, they're fairly similar to each other. Redstone contact is just boring and plain in itself. But if you have two of them together, they create a redstone signal and will actually form off of it. Let me grab a little bit of the redstone off of here. So if you see, nothing is coming off of that, right? Nothing at all coming out of any of these. 
Now, if I replace this, and in fact, I grab one of these, put this down, you can see redstone it, signals are being transmitted everywhere, but it has to be uh, stable. If it's in a moving state, it's not going to be able to actually detect. So once it stops, it creates a redstone signal. And then I'm using this flex peter. This thing is a repeater that allows you to adjust it up to 30 minutes of craziness. Uh, can I do this with a shift click? No, uh, there you go. Up to 30 minutes of a redstone delay. It's crazy. Right now I've got this one set on 15 seconds. So once it gets down here, it's got a 15 second uh, redstone pulse that it's going to shoot down there. And for that time, while the redstone is active, let's actually grab a lever. There you go. While the redstone is active, it then reverses the gear shift and brings the entire thing back. And instead of putting one of these, uh, uh, what is it, the mechanical harvesters, I put a redstone contact on there. Now here's something you should probably know, is that if you have the, uh, the what is it, the piston extension poles coming over and across crops, bad things will happen. So let me get a little bit of dirt, and I can actually uh, show you here. I'm going to put a piece of dirt down here. I'm going to grab a hoe. And then we can put this and we can hoe till this dirt uh, once it gets back in this area. In fact, I might grab a little bit more just to show you. And then we can till this once it is retracted. There's one, two, three. Now watch what happens. Because these here, the piston extension poles are in place, when it starts going forward, it will slowly start ruining those, specifically once it stops it will ruin those. If it's always in motion, it will not ruin any farmland. But there you go, it stopped and boom, it turned it into dirt. Another thing that you're going to want to watch out for is if you have full size blocks at the end of this run, let's say, uh, let's wait for this thing to actually get, get back, move back. Instead of these slabs, let's have full size blocks, right? Well, if you notice, there's actually a very thin line here and items can get caught on that line when they're getting pushed by this uh, piston network. So therefore, that's that's a bad thing. You need to have it go below that in order for it to go off. So if you just put hoppers at the very end of this, it's not really going to work so well because it's going to catch on the edge of the hopper half the time. Some of them will make it through. So if you don't really care about some loss, then don't worry about it. But otherwise, you're probably going to want to have something down below it. Uh, you can put uh, a conveyor belt at the end of this. But as before, if you have some items that are being pushed onto conveyor belts as opposed to being conveyed onto conveyor belts or dropped onto them, it, they don't always work quite as intended because they sometimes will clip through the, uh, the block and therefore it's not as reliable. So in this case, I ended up just waterlogging uh, some of these planks just for aesthetic sake it pushes everything into a hopper system which is then going down into uh, an extractor and a chest combo down there and of course i've got everything being run up here now let's talk about some of this other stuff that we have going on so right here we still have a little bit more of the logistics of belts we've got an encased belt this is a one or two piece belt part that can basically, instead of it being like a mechanical belt on a shaft, let's let's get a couple of these uh, if I so can. I just need something to kind of stack against. You'll notice that there's two of them here and two there and two there, etc. Well, if I put this here, this is basically the same idea as connecting some parts. So if you want it to look, a, connecting belts rather, if you want it to look a bit nicer, you can do this as I've got here. So instead of having these two just be like two more belts and two more shafts, you just put down some encased belts, which, you know, they're they're not too bad. Uh, and you get two of them out of it. Now you can also do more than just encase things with them. So they don't just look like a full block and you can actually stand on them and you won't get pushed or anything like that. And therefore it, it's a little bit safer for your workspace. You can actually rotate them. So let's see if I go like this and like this, and then I add in, uh, I need that motor. There you go. You can see it is now rotating up here. So you can actually twist things as you want to in a way. And it, it works going above as well. So if I put uh, another one here, 
Obviously, that's just going to be same versus same, but if I come over here, it'll twist around that way as well. Now, it's not going to go like this, though, because there's that doesn't really compute. But yes, you can do this. <laughs> Even though it doesn't seem like it would, it, it lines up properly, it does. And I've actually seen devices that work like that. And as you can see, I've got several of these lined up. And they all go over here. And yes, I, I have a little pupper here that is just kind of helping out. And it goes up into this. And all of the, uh, the, the seeds and the wheat that gets harvested in here, which actually let me get a little bit of some bone meal. There we go. And I can start really just going to town with getting a whole bunch of these so you guys can see the entire... Oh, there's no seeds there. <laughs> so you can see the entire process at work here. And yes, I can actually bone meal this stuff while this is going over because it it's just a passing block. It's not actually anything that is in place just yet. So there you go. Now there's a full grown set. Instead of it going every like 15, 30 seconds, it is now going to push everything as it goes, breaks them all, pushes them forward into the water, and you've got a whole bunch of crops coming out. First it's going to be the seeds, then it's probably going to end up being the uh, the wheat popping out as well. And don't worry, I've got a, a seed filter set up as well. And if you notice, as with most belt logistics, they will actually just sit there and wait for their turn before they go on the belt. They, are, they aren't going to overcrowd. Eventually, I hope that the... There's the wheat. Wheat's starting to come out now. And then these are all going to go up. And here's the, another thing about the belts, is that if you have it going up and up, uh, thinking, oh, it'll just drop down under the belt below it. it. It won't necessarily do so. Specifically, if you've got it coming up at a 45 degree angle like this, it might overshoot. <laughs> so it's something you're going to want to be careful of. And therefore, you might just want to have it go into an inventory and drop down from there with some kind of extractor or whatnot. And then, of course, I've got these two uh, at the extent. That's the longest that a belt can go. And then it goes all the way down here and it gets dropped into the inside here which of course as before gets ground up seeds get put down into this place wheat ends up getting uh well seeds end up getting destroyed but the wheat ends up going down into this and turned into bread in the end as i did with the previous episode so that's it that's pretty much it for now i mean there's a ton of really cool stuff you can do with just just a few of these items here especially if you you really want to have some fun with this. If you want to know what it looks like on its side, uh, I have stairs on the inside so that the uh, fences do not connect instead of solid blocks. But otherwise, let's click this lever out here. There we go. You can see it's just a basic setup of some sticky mechanical pistons, three piston extension pole, three of the translation chassis which they don't need to be on. oh yeah they do need to be on three because three blocks forward one two three blocks long and then they end up pushing this up and down and there you go that's that's pretty much it i don't think that there's much else i hope you guys enjoyed this uh create stuff i'm gonna have at least one more create video before i end up finishing this series and I hope that you've been enjoying it so far if so be sure to give a like comment subscribe and uh don't be afraid to stop by on twitch We'll see you guys next time.